Good evening, folks. It's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project, Magnetic Reversal News, Sacred Geography, and Shinrin Yoku, bringing you a grand solar minimum update Friday, December 15th, 8.30 p.m. Mountain Time, 2023. The new models are in from WSA and little solar winds uh, prediction here, and it is showing quite a significant impact. In fact, a cannibalization of CMEs here all arriving at the same time tomorrow night, Saturday night, Sunday morning, where we could reach G2 level geomagnetic storm or higher. Keep calm. It's boom time. We have rain and snow across the plains and a strong storm is expected across the southeast and mid-Atlantic this weekend. Rain and snow will continue to move across the plains and upper Midwest Friday evening. A few pockets of isolated freezing rain are possible. A wave of low pressure will move across the lower Mississippi Valley, Florida, Saturday, and then up the East Coast on Sunday and Monday. Heavy to excessive rainfall, gusty winds, and coastal impacts, and strong to severe thunderstorms will be possible. Click on your county. For more information over at weather.gov, here is the GFS model for total snowfall. Let's take a look as we head in to Christmas here. Here is the weekend, Saturday and Sunday, a little clipper moving across North Dakota and Minnesota right there for Saturday and Sunday. And then by the time we hit Monday and Tuesday, we will have a system moving up Appalachia. Take a look at that. West Virginia picking up some heavy snow in the high elevations. And snow will be moving into the Sierras by Monday. That snow will continue through Wednesday. And then here we can see Christmas Eve Eve snow moving into the Four Corners region on the 23rd and 24th. There is your Christmas Day forecast for snow across the U.S. So there is your white Christmas forecast. And much further out, it's just showing extremely heavy winter precipitation in the Pacific Northwest, bringing epic heavy snow totals up to Washington State there, as well as continued precipitation for the Northeast. So buckle up. It's going to be a white Christmas for many. Here is the interactive snowpack map, and you can see we are still lacking in many regions. It's the average, the yellow, and the orange is below average. The red is well below average, and the only ones coming in good are green and blue here. So we have a long way to go, and we need much more snow. I'm sure Al Gore is happy about that. And we will do a quick seismic update. Most recent quake just kicking off here in Papua New Guinea, 4.9 at blot up echo depth, 392 kilometers. So we could see more enhanced activity up at the surface here in Papua New Guinea in the coming hours. Overall, very low, lack, low level seismic activity worldwide. Worldwide Volcano News, we've got Dukono to 8,000 feet. Marapi with an A. Significant eruption to 17,000 feet today. We also got Nevado de Ruiz to 25,000, Sangay to 22,000, and Sabancaya puffing and passing to 30,000 feet today. Krakatoa, in the form of Krakatau, continues to puff with more paroxysms at around 4,000 feet. And that brings us to the Reykjanes volcano update. Uplift continues uh, in the region of the dike. The area around Svartsvengi continues to swell. Although the inflation rate has waned since Friday of last week, it is still higher than it was prior to the formation of the dike on the 10th of November. Magma continues to migrate beneath the surface. Therefore, the likelihood of an eruption remains still. And that brings us over to the space weather update. The largest solar flare in six years led to problems with radio communications with planes. In fact, it was one of the largest radio blackouts ever recorded on Earth. This amazing event, the strongest solar flare of the solar cycle, was likely one of the largest solar radio events ever recorded. Radio communication impacts between approximately 1,200 and 1,400 EST on Thursday and CWSUS report degraded communications across the nations of, well, there they are. Never seen anything like this. Possible Earth-directed coronal mass ejection headed our way. The highest impact in South America. And we just saw multiple aviation communication impacts associated with this event, which leads me to believe that it's our waning magnetosphere, the magnetic excursion, which is allowing much more energy from small events 
like we've never seen before. This was, remember, only an X 2.87, and it was not directly facing Earth. So we are seeing that the increased effects of the waning magnetosphere, which will only get worse, in my opinion. So buckle up. It's just beginning. Uh, we can take a look at how all of these CMEs played out over the last 48 hours, explosion after explosion, and they will be headed our way. In fact, we did have the passage of one CME earlier today, but the big news is the X 2.87, and there it is, cannibalizing other CMEs. They will all be coming all at once, boom, to hit tomorrow night late into Sunday morning. So heed the warnings. We could see G2 geomagnetic storm in the detailed forecast. That's all they're going. I'm going to push it up to G3 here. So there will be enhanced aurora and currently just a slight enhancement of the aurora there that could increase overnight. So keep a close eye for any updates, especially here as you can see the plasma speed now moving up above 500 kilometers per second, which is a good sign that that aurora will be enhanced. So we're looking for the next two days. Geomagnetic storm watch for G2 geomagnetic storm, potentially higher. And here we are over at Oppenheimer Ranch Project at Diamond the Dave on X, formerly Twitter, where we retweeted seven hours ago a nice side-by-side -side imagery of all the CMEs in the last few days. And it is, well, it's literally boom time. So please subscribe to us for daily updates over at X where you can stay informed all day before anyone else. Mysterious fast radio bursts in space keep getting stranger. And fast radio bursts or bright millisecond long flashes of radio waves in space are one of the most enduring mysteries in the cosmos and they just became a little stranger. The first fast radio burst was discovered in 2007, and since then, hundreds of these quick, intense events have been detected coming from distant points across the universe. In a thousandth of a second, the burst can generate as much energy as the sun creates in one year or more. Oh my goodness. But now scientists have noticed a never before seen quirky pattern and a newly spotted and repeating FRB, called FRB 20220912A. A study published Wednesday in the monthly notices of the Royal Astronomical Society details the discovery, which provides valuable clues to research aiming to identify the phenomenon's source. Now, astronomers detected the burst using California based SETI Institute Alien Array Telescope, ATA, which includes 42 antenna, and the paper. Let's take a look at it. We'll be linked below if you're interested in this topic. Characterization of the repeating FRB 20220912A with the Allen Telescope Array. Go get it. Oh, we've actually had this open twice. That's why it took so long. Now, new breakthrough in my neck of the woods, just about an hour to the west of here. Archaeologists have discovered... Pueblo astronomical carvings and paintings in Colorado. This is more from the time of when the Maya were up here, when they call them the Anasazi during the Chacoan times. But get this, archaeologists from not this country. That's what's blowing my mind. The University of Hegelian in Krakow have announced the discovery of these petroglyphs and paintings associated with this culture, including massive spirals. There's a human there, so that's like a meter wide there. Got to go out and check, find out where these are. The discovery was made at the Castle Rock Pueblo Settlement Complex, located on Mesa Verde Plateau, on the border between Colorado and Utah. Previous research of the area identified Pueblo pe petroglyphs from the 12th and the 13th century AD, as well as the 15th and century AD from the Utes, um, but this is an amazing discovery, and these people are not even from the United States, which makes it even more bizarre. But I'm sure Rex and I, maybe even Leah, will go out here and we'll try to locate this area. It looks absolutely spectacular. Look at all these hash marks. Let's blow this up. It's the only real image we got. So, 
and quite weathered as well. A lot of weathering going on here, but look at this interesting square pattern. And then here, there's massive, it's not a spiral. Those are concentric rings. So that could be showing maybe double layers as far as the electric universe is concerned. That could actually be a supernova, uh, which happened around 1000 AD. So interesting stuff, more interesting stuff coming here. Do you, are you an early riser? Do you get up early? Well, guess what? You may have Neanderthal DNA. So if you're a morning person, you're probably part Neanderthal. Pretty cool stuff. Even more cool stuff. Scientists report groundbreaking first conversation between humans and whales. Now, this is all coming from the researchers at the SETI Institute. This is the search for extraterrestrial intelligence. And they may have been the just accomplished the first conversation with a whale. In fact, a humpback, and his name is Twain. Now, the SETI scientists have been exploring interspecies communication to learn something about how we may someday interact with extraterrestrial intelligences. See, the funny thing is, we may already have, and that is really creepy. Now, a video just played moments ago, and I want you to, if you didn't see it, to go check it out. It is a Crestone Energy Fair appeal. We discuss the successes and the failures of what's been going on with the longest running energy fair on the planet, 34 years in a row. Innovative energy systems, innovative building technologies, healthy lifestyles, and community building is what the energy fair is all about. We've been a supporter and a contributor for years now, and it is near and dear to our hearts. So please check out the Crestone Energy Fair appeal video. It's just 20 minutes long, and well, you could we could probably use your help. And that's a boom to knowledge. Thanks for watching, guys. Please hit the thumbs up. It helps with the Al Gore rhythm. Become a Patreon. Support the work we do. Watch all of our stuff in one place commercial free. It's free to hit the thumbs up. So do it. We love you. Be safe. And that, well, that is a boom. Mm -hmm.